1972. Bound to international pressure, the Pakistan government released Mujib on the 8th of January, 1972. Zulfiqar Ali Bhutto met Mujib on the same day. Mujib immediately left for London en route to Dhaka. In London, British Prime Minister Edward Heap met him. On his way back to Dhaka from London, he stopped in New Delhi. He was received by Indian President Vivi Giri and Prime Minister Indira Gandhi at the airport. An unforgettable reception was accorded to Mujib when the father of the nation reached Dhaka on the 10th of January. From the airport, he drove sta- straight to the racecourse ground. He delivered his address before the mammoth gathering. On the 12th of January, Mujib took over as the Prime Minister of Bangladesh. On the 6th of February, he visited India at the invitation of the Indian government. After 24 years of expulsion, the Dhaka University authorities resigned at his earlier uh, expulsion expulsion order. On the 1st of March, he went to the Soviet Union on an official visit. The Allied Indian Army left Dhaka on the 12th of March in Mujib's request. On the 1st of May, he announced a raise in the salary of class 3 and 4 employees of the government. On the 30th of July, Mujib went to London for medical treatment, and from there he went to Geneva. On the 10th of October, the World Peace Council conferred the Julio Curie Award on him. On the 4th of November, Mujib announced that the first general election in Bangladesh would be held on the 7th of March, 1973. On the 15th of December, Mujib's government announced that state awards would be given to freedom fighters. On the 14th of December, he affixed his signature to the uh, the draft constitution. On the first anniversary of the liberation, the constitution of the People's Republic of Bangladesh was adopted. The important achievements of Mujib's government were the re- reorganization of the administrative system, framing of the constitution, rehabilitation of one core people, core uh, means 70 million, if I remember off the top of my head, restoration and development of the communication system, expansion of education, supply of free books to students up to class 5, and low-priced books to students uh, up to class 8, effect a ban on all anti-Islamic and anti-social activities like gambling, horse race, consumption of liquor, establishment of the Islamic Foundation, uh, reorganization of the Madras Education Board. <coughs> he, <coughs> he established 11,000 primary schools. <coughs> he nationalized 40,000 primary schools. He established a women rehabilitation center and he is esta- oh geez oh geez there's a lot of this establishment of the freedom fighters welfare trust tax waiver up to 25 bigas of land distribution for uh, of agricultural inputs among farmers free of cost or at nominal price nationalization of banks and insurance companies and the 580 industrial units banded by the pakistanis and employment of thousands of workers and employees construction of the gorasal fertilizer factory primary work of the ashugan complex and establishment of new industrial units and reopening of closed industries. Mujib successfully worked on setting up economic infrastructure to lead the country towards progress and prosperity. Another landmark achievement to lead the country towards progress oh, another landmark achievement of Mujib's government was to have Bangladesh recognized by a large number of countries of the world in the shortest amount of time. 1973. The Awami League secured 293 seats out of the 300 Jatiyo Sangsad or Parliament seats in the first general elections. On the 3rd of September, the Awami League, the Communist Party of Bangladesh, and the National Awami League formed the Oikya Front. On the 6th of September, Mujib set off to Algeria to attend the non-aligned, mo- the non-aligned movement summit conference. 1974, the People's Republic of Bangladesh was accorded membership of the United Nations. On the 25th of September, Sheikh Mujibur Rahman addressed the UN General Assembly in Bengali for the first time in the history of the UN. Finally, 1975. So, that's going to be the last part the timeline we're going to read, which is two pages, not shockingly, because it was the last year of his life when he was brutally assassinated. So, that's what we're going to be doing next time. Thank you everybody for watching. We'll see you in the next one.